Men and masculinity are being marginalized. Manly virtues are now laughed at. Worse, they're considered dysfunctional. Men are being edged out of the family, the workplace, and wider society. The game of life is increasingly being played by women's rules. Success and failure measured by women's criteria. In a stable, relatively law-abiding 21st century society, man is not needed as a protector. In a welfare state in which most women work, he's not needed as a breadwinner. And with sperm banks, IVF and same-sex marriages, what's the point of him? Will there come a time when he isn't needed at all? Man is becoming redundant, an optional extra, rather like metallic paint on a car or grated chocolate on your cappuccino. I think we've got ourselves into a situation in this society where we are telling men it's not okay for you to be a man. Everything to do with manhood we despise. The strength, uh, the aggression, uh, the drive for leadership. And of course, all these things are things that actually make a nation. Without them, a society goes down the pan. <laughs> I think men are now the underclass. We love what's masculine about men, but we won't let them be masculine. And I think it's very difficult for them to find something that they can be praised for. And what they're praised for now is basically taking on uh, the role of female, which isn't their strong point. All around me, I see people trying to feminize society, to reverse the roles of men and women, to run masculinity out of town altogether. What was, I think, a genuine campaign for equality between the sexes has turned into a gender vendetta. The whole male sex is being demonized. The pendulum has swung too far in women's favor. It's time to redress the balance. A lot's changed since the 60s. Back then, a generation of angry young females turned their backs on house whiffery and marched off to be a different kind of woman. You keep saying you got something for me. Or perhaps come to think of it, a different kind of man. There were casualties of this victory for female emancipation, some women, but mostly men. I think the demonization of men has come from what I would call extreme gender feminism. That's not the kind of feminism which says that men and women should be regarded as equal in the sense of having equal opportunities and women being treated with respect and so forth. It's the kind of feminism which took over in the late 60s, early 70s, which basically said that men were intrinsically violent, that men were all rapists, as the phrase went at the time. And I'm afraid that's rather stuck. Outsmarted and outstripped by women at every turn, men are in crisis. You only need a quick look at the statistics. Sperm counts are falling by 2.6% a year. The male suicide rate has risen by 70% in the last decade. 93% of convicted acts of violence are carried out by men. 65% of divorces are initiated by women. By the age of 80, there are nearly twice as many women alive as there are men. Historically, male physical strength, competitiveness, aggression have made men dominant physically and mentally, for good or for evil. I am the greatest. It was men who made all their heavy industry, the wars, the scientific advances, the cultural triumphs, building, protecting from other men, inventing, creating, destroying. It was all very messy, but it was male qualities that have driven humanity to its present preeminence, inventing almost everything that matters, creating all the art that is sublime, and of course, making most of the misery in the world. Three, two, one, fire! The Second World War sent women into the workplace. As men went off to fight, thousands of women took on their jobs in factories and on farms. Down on the farm, the land girls are doing their bit and a bit more. And you should see their cows. After the war came a great revolution in housework. 
Machines made cooking, cleaning and washing so much easier. Overnight, in historical terms, they were free for other things. Technology not only liberated women, it wiped out men's traditional advantage. Male strength was redundant. Female skills, like multitasking, were suddenly more important. The result, men's status, is in disastrous decline, as blue-collar jobs disappear, and with it, their role as the breadwinner. I think one thing that women don't understand is that they can be defined by many different things. It can be their job, being a wife, being a mother, it hugely defines people. A man really only has his career. You rarely see a woman committing suicide over an issue at work. Unemployment for a man or redundancy is something he will kill himself over because he has lost his sense of self. And although women love work and they're very good at it, they, on the whole, and I do think it's biological, spread themselves far wider. They want a more well-balanced life. They are not willing to put up with divorces and heart bypasses just to get a job promotion. Since 1973, 90% of all new jobs have gone to women. Men are not only being displaced from the lower level jobs, they're losing ground everywhere. It's been slower at the top, but more and more women are smashing through the so-called glass ceiling. Rachel Elmo, a founder of Red Letter Day, a company that sells once-in-a-lifetime luxury experiences, I wanted her opinion on how far feminization has infiltrated big business. Do you think business is a male-dominated arena still? Yes, very much so. And I think it's probably one of the last bastions of the male control. Um, and all of the kind of powerhouses of control are still hugely male-dominated. I think they're clinging on as hard as they can, you know, to keep that power. Women who are getting to the top of those organisations have done it through almost being very masculine or alpha female at the very minimum. Do you think men in business are perhaps even uh, 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 more defensive because of what's going on in society at large? Um, well, the men that I meet in business, particularly the ones who are at the top, have, have, have still got all those male traits, except accentuated to the nth degree. And I think those things do get uh, larger than life when you get very successful men in a very male world. Might that be why they're successful? Yes, but if you've invented the rules, then, you know, um, you invent the rules that you want to play by. And despite everything that's happened, the rules are still very much male ones, male created, and therefore they have much more chance of winning. But business isn't uh, a playground. Business isn't a, a social service. Business is competitive. Yes. By its very nature. And therefore, it's not just that men make the rules. It's just that those particular qualities happen to lead to success in business. Yeah. But I suppose it, it depends how you measure success, because... Well, it's easy to measure success in business, isn't it? It's how much money you make. Well, that's... For you and your shareholders. But that's a very male measure. No, so it is the measure of business. A business isn't around just to be nice to its employees no, or to I, its customers. I totally... It is there to actually produce a result at the end of the day. Your business as much as anybody else. Yes, but if you look at it on a wider scale and in terms of the market and the way that it's changing, something like 80% of consumer decisions now are made or influenced by women. So even things like car purchases and financial products and health purchases which traditionally have been considered as very male consumer areas are now very much influenced by women. So what you're saying, that even though, you know, men's last stand is business, that actually their days are numbered. Because if the consumer decisions are being made by women, mm. then that ultimately is going to fashion business as well in yes, women's image. Absolutely. I think it's the businesses that wake up to the fact that they need to have that female voice, not just at middle management level, but at the top level. Those are the ones that have more chance of succeeding. Do you think men feel threatened by women these days? I think men's power base is being eroded, that's for sure. So um, I think the changes are for the good. So um, yes, it's long overdue. Mm -hmm.